this morning. We ask even as your word will come, Lord, let it come unhindered and uninterrupted. Let everybody that hear the sound of my voice this day be transformed. Lord, oh God, take us from where we are right now and take us to a place that you want us to be. Let Christ be exalted. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You may have your seat. The Lord be praised. The Lord be exalted. You are welcome to, to this worship service. Um, I'm just so thankful that I can be in your midst on a beautiful Sunday like this to share God's word to God's precious people. Thank the Lord for this opportunity. I want to appreciate the leadership of the church for this opportunity. Um, and also, I want to also thank the church and every person that took time to uh, <laughs> to wish me uh, to wish me well during the ordination. Uh, I got a lot of personal test messages and all the ones that popped up in the group chat. A lot of people uh, were not just wishing me well, but they were also taking time to pray for me, and uh, it's. Um, I could sense it. I could actually sense it. It felt so really good uh, that when people come together to pray for you, you just yeah, don't. I can't quantify it, but let's. Why? Why? Say just let's keep praying for one another. Let's keep praying for one another. Um, it's so, so good as that I felt that I should be ordained every week. I've never been like that before. I'm serious. Um, I felt I should have ordination come every week. I've never experienced that spiritual height, or let me put it, that spiritual high. Mm? I've never been drunk in my life. I've, uh, neither have I used um, weed or any of that thing, but it was a spiritual high. That's how I can explain it, a spiritual high. Mm. It was just a blessing. It was just a blessing. Um, <coughs> so let's keep praying for one another. Very important. Uh, a lot of people have been approaching me, saying, now that you're a deacon, um, well... I may see here, I may start acting more like pastor now. <laughs> so I'll become, more <laughs> I'll become more quiet, more, more reserved. Yes, yeah. I saw somebody the other day. He came to me. I was like, bless you. He was like, hmm, hmm, this doesn't. Well, the, um, I only got Odini Dickin, so. And there's a disclaimer to it. I quickly have to say that. Don't come looking for my trouble. Is the truth. Uh, they say, don't trouble trouble, so that trouble will not trouble you. So stay in your own lane. Yeah. All right. So this morning, <coughs> we're going to be looking at two principles. If you're writing, the topic is the principles for oliftment. <coughs> principles for oliftment. I beg your pardon. Uh, this principle, it's, uh, it will make any leader in your life be a better leader. This leader can range from your pastor seated right here. It can be your, um, your parent. It can be your teacher, your professor in school. It could even be your boss at work. When you follow these principles, it will make that leader be a better leader over you. So, principle number one, and I encourage you to write if you are not writing. Principle number one is... The principle of honoring. Let's just quickly commit the word of the word we're about to hear to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. Give it life. Give it understanding to the simple. Lord, I pray you breathe upon your word that your word will become life unto us if we hear it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mark chapter 6. The principle of honoring. Mark chapter 6. We're going to read the first five verses. All right. So let's let's follow along as I as I read. Very important. Then he went out from Okay, let's back up to number one. There he went out from there and came to his own country, and his own disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day had come, he began to teach in the Sagano, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where, why, where did this man get these things? And uh, what wisdom is this given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Verse 3. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, and Judah, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Take note of that word. They were offended. They took offense. They took offense. Take note of that. We're going to come to read. And Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without word honor, except in his own country, amongst his own relative, 
and his own house. Hallelujah. Verse 5. And he could not do mighty works there. This is very surprising. Shocking to me and should be shocking to anybody. He said Jesus could not do mighty works there except that he laid his hands on some few sick people and they were healed. He healed them. Hallelujah. The son of man was limited by what? Dishonor. In other words, he was in a place where they were not honoring him and he couldn't what? He couldn't do much. Who are we talking about here? We are talking about Jesus. God in the flesh. The one who created all things and through him all things were created. We are told that he could not do anything except just to what? Heal some what? A few sick people. Right? It, it amazes me. The son of God. The Bible talks that how Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all that were what? Oppressed for the Lord was him. But when he came to his what? His own hometown. We are told that because of dishonor, the Lord what? Could not what? Do many miracles. He was limited by what? Dishonor. This God that we save, this unlimited God that we save, he was what? Limited by what? Dishonor. Psalm 78 verse 41 says that they turned their back and they tempted God and they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Yes, you see, and again, and, uh, and yes, again and again, they tempted God and they limited what? The Holy One of what? Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. They are things that you can do. Huh, that you can limit God in your life. This unlimited God, this God of the universe, there are certain mindsets that you can have, certain relationships that you keep, that what you can actually limit God in your life. There's a song that we sing. Many of us know the song, we sing it here. The title of the song is what? On what? Limited God. It said, no man can see the end of your grace. Oh, no man can know the end of your love. Ah, oh, no man can see the end of your glory. As far as the heavens stand, stand above the earth, you are exalted, unlimited God. As far as the heavens stand, stand above the earth, you are exalted, unlimited God. We just sang, God cannot be limited. He's the unlimited God. But he came to his own hometown. He became limited. That scripture we read, Psalm 78, verse 41. He said, and they limited the Holy One of what Israel, all through what dishonor. According to the passage we read in Mark chapter 6, there are two things that can what cause dishonor. Two things. The very first thing that can cause dishonor is what? Familiarity. Everybody say familiarity. Yeah, that's the number one thing that can cause dishonor. The word familiarity, it comes from the word word, family. It comes from the word family. If you look at people who are not saved, people who have never stepped into a church, they can rightly quote that verse to you. They will say, uh, a prophet is not without honor except in his own word, country. Yes? But that Bible verse doesn't end there. It also goes on to say that amongst his own relative and is in his own word, house. Familiarity. I mean, you, you take a look at it. You, you say, I, I know that person behind closed doors. I know him. What are you telling me to honor him? I, I, I've seen him in his bad days when he acts out. You're telling me to honor that person. That's what they were saying to Jesus. They said, We know him now. Is it not, is it not Mary? Uh, me, uh, the son of Mary, the carpenter. We know his brothers. But they did not bring what? Honor to him. Praise the Lord. Over the course of my life, I've been blessed by so many pastors. Uh, every city I've been in America, I've always had pastors over me in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. For me, I started this thing long back. I maintain what I call a long-distance relationship with my pastor. In fact, Pastor Mike is the closest of the pastors I've been with. I don't know how he was able to do it, but I still maintain a long-distance relationship. And it's all because of what? Familiarity. If Pastor Mike keeps buzzing my phone Monday through Friday, it will get to a point I will stop picking it. I'm, I'm honest. If he calls me Monday, I will pick up. Hey, if he calls me Tuesday, guess what? I will pick up. But when he gets to Wednesday, I was like, what is this? 
Especially when he's calling me, just say, hey, but I first what are you doing? Hey, let's go hang out or let's go play table tennis. By the time I see it happen for two consecutive days, by the third day, guess what? I won't pick it. Because I don't want to get to a point whereby I will what? Start this, based out of familiarity, dishonor my what? Set in. There's a popular quote that says, familiarity what? Breeds what? Content. Familiarity breeds content. Hallelujah. There, there, there is, um, <laughs> I think it was um, Apostle Joshua Seman that told of this story. There was a pastor and a, and a wife, um, and they had challenges in their home. And the pastor would go ahead and he would pray for his members like this. And the miracles would be happening right there. You'll be seeing it. And for the longest time, what, it, nothing was happening in their home. Nothing was just happening. It was, they couldn't understand it. So the wife was in service one day, and as soon as they shared the grace, she just took off. The husband was worried. He was like, what is going on here? Ha, ah, did I do something wrong? So as soon as he was able to talk, uh, t- talk to everybody and everything, he dashed around home. On getting home, he saw the wife have brought out all the special dishes. And you know those special china, those special plates? The one you bring when Obama visits your house. <laughs> he brought them out and he was serving his husband. Oh, that, sweetheart, did I do something wrong? Is there anything wrong? What, tell me, what did I do? I saw you took off. She said, as you were ministering, the Lord opened my eyes that I have not been what honoring you the right way. The, the man of God said, the pastor said, a certain anointing came upon him that very hour that has never come upon him before he laid hands on his wife and prayed and things changed. Hallelujah. Familiarity can bring dishonor. And that is what happened in, um, in, in, uh, that is what happened in the case of Jesus. In his hometown. Hallelujah. So what did I say was the first thing that brings uh, dishonor? Familiarity. The second thing that brings what? Dishonor is offenses. The Bible says they were what? Offended. Imagine they took offense at Jesus Christ. They took offense. They, they, they were offended. Offended by what he said. And if there's any offense, you have to clear it up. I don't care whether that offense is worthy of the person really offended you. Or, or early of that matter, you have to clear that offense because God has forward forgiven you. So also you ought to forgive expressly as Christ has what forgiven you. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a time back, a little time back, I was in a church setting like this and been planning to do some certain things and my leader called me and said, Fosa, it's not going to happen. Hi. I didn't feel good. But I didn't let him know because my parents have trained me to always honor so I said, okay, I agree. But I was offended. I, I, knew, I knew I was offended because when I went to pray, I couldn't pray. That's how I knew immediately when I get offended. And the thing would not go. I said, Lord, I forgive. <laughs> I'm not offended. But it was there. Uh, the Holy Spirit told me, this is what I have to do. Say, send him, send him money. Send him some, some good money. I, I did. I sent, he didn't know what was going on. I said, ah, I just thought about blessing you. I gave it to him. That was when the offense left and I could get back. Praise the Lord. You have to clear early offense. You have to clear early offense. So, it is amazing, as I mentioned, Jesus Christ was in his hometown among his relatives and he couldn't do much miracle. Is it possible that dishonor is hindering somebody that God has placed in your life from doing mighty miracles? Is it possible? Ask yourself that question. Is it possible that God has placed somebody in your life all because of dishonor? That might be causing mighty miracles to happen. Um, this issue about honor, we've heard it many times from this pulpit. Many times. I know I've heard it at least twice, if not more, from Pastor Mike. Uh, there's a reason sometimes we hear things over and over. God might be trying to speak to somebody that this is a principle we need to follow. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2. Ephesians 6 verse 2. It says, Honor your father, and your word, mother, which is the first commandment, verse 3. That he may be what? Well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. There are many people. I mean, it's very common to say, well, if you don't live long, or the one we know a lot is, if you don't live long, uh, if you don't honor your parents, you may not live long. But there are a lot of people, things are not going well for them because what? they are not honoring, honoring, honoring their parents. 
things are not just going well because they are not what honoring their parents we are told of a story in the old testament in, in book of genesis about noah when noah had stepped out of the ark we told that he got drunk and as he got drunk he became exposed he became naked and one of his sons we are told they begin to mock him and begin went out and begin to uh, make fun of his father and uh, revealed his father's nakedness but we're also told about two of the other sons what did they do we are told they took a blanket put it on their shoulders and they, they backed up into where their father was and they covered their father's nakedness at the end of that story we are told that those two sons were what they were blessed the other one who went about exposing his father's nakedness making fun of the father became what was cursed yes was cursed hallelujah was cursed praise the name of the lord uh, so it is very important that we have to honor we have to honor our father we have to honor our parents the principle of honor is very important let's go to the second principle because of time uh, the second principle is the principle of receiving everybody say the principle of receiving all right you gotta speak up speak up a little bit louder the principle of receiving all right now let's let's turn our bibles to matthew chapter 10 we're going to read the first, uh, sorry, we're going to read verse 40, 40 and 41. Okay, good. He said, uh, this is Jesus Christ speaking. He said, who receives you, receives me. Hmm. So if you receive, he said, okay, I'll just keep reading. Um, and he who receives me, receives him who what sent me. And who is who sent Jesus, the Father. All right, so Jesus Christ is saying, who receives, if you receive me, you also what? Receive the word, Father. Let's ve next verse, verse 41. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So, what is the principle of receiving? We have to know this. We have to get it. It's very easy. Every time we receive gifts, I know all of us have received gifts before. So what is the principle of receiving? I'm going to state it. I'm probably stating more than once. So we catch it. Now, this is the principle of receiving. When you receive someone, when you receive someone into your life as God's perfect gift to you, even though that person might not be perfect, but when you receive someone as God's perfect gift into your life, what you are doing is you are actually releasing that person to, to become what all God intends for that person to be in your life. I'm going to state it one more time. When you, when you receive somebody, when you receive somebody as God's perfect gift into your life, huh? the person might not be perfect. You are actually releasing that person to become all what God intends to what be in your life. And a perfect example of this is the person of what? Jesus. In John chapter 1, verses 12, if we we'll go over there really fast, the Bible says, To as many that received him, say, But as many that word received him, everybody say received, everybody say received, as many as what received him, to them he gave power, he gave the right. Now, the Greek word for right, I've forgotten it, but it means power and authority. To them he gave power and authority to become what children of God to those that word believe in his word name to those that believe in his name so jesus christ has all power as we've said he's the creator of the universe he has the power to to heal he has the power to save he has the power to deliver but that power will not be at work in your life until you what receive him until you receive that gift uh, you, or to receive Christ as his perfect gift from God, then you are releasing Jesus, his son, to become what? All that God's intent to be from you. That's why a lot of people are not saved. You know why they have not saved? They have not received Christ as that perfect gift coming from God. Hallelujah. They have not. They have not received that perfect gift. So that, uh, and, and that was the problem of the people in, in his hometown. They did not receive Jesus as the son of God. Rather, they received him as a what? As a carpenter and when they did that guess what he could not what do many miracles because all they could see was who a carpenter they did not receive him as what as the son of god hallelujah so when we receive someone as god's perfect gift 
we release that person to become all that God wants to us to be in our life. This concept or this truth or this principle is very true between a husband and a wife. It's very true between <laughs> children. And it's even very true within even your boss. So when you live here and you go to work tomorrow, or as it may be, when you accept that boss, once again, that boss might not be perfect, right? But when you receive that boss as God's perfect gift, as of that time in your life, what you are actually doing is releasing that boss who is not perfect to become all God wants intends to you to be in your life. Praise the Lord. But this concept is very huge when it comes to marriage. When it comes to relationship between a man and a wife in holy matrimony, you have, listen to me everybody, please, you have to learn, if you are married here, you have to learn to receive your spouse as God's perfect gift from you. Your, your spouse might not be perfect. You have to learn it. I learned it. My wife is here now. She wasn't here earlier. My wife is here. I, I learned it. I learned how to receive my wife as God's perfect gift to me. And I started experiencing all. In fact, I, by me doing that, I released her to become all God wants for her to be in me. And I started and entered into a new level of blessedness and joy in, in my marriage. Hallelujah. God, God is truly amazing. The way God works. God will bring, <laughs> he will bring two people of different backgrounds. Right? Two people. Completely different ideologies. Perspective of life. Take for instance, regarding the issue of punctuality. He might bring a man who believes that punctuality is showing off 15 minutes before service starts. With somebody, with a, with a woman, whose idea of punctuality is leaving the house when that meeting is starting. And he will bring them together. I know it's the truth. I don't know how why God does it, but he does it. What you have to realize, what you have to realize is that person is perfect for you. That man is perfect for you. That woman is perfect for you. Let me give you another, <laughs> another word or phrase for, um, for the word receiving. Another word or phrase. If you are writing, write this down. Another word or phrase for receiving is unconditional word acceptance. Unconditional word acceptance. And that is what you did in your vow. When you were exchanging, if you are married here, you were exchanging vow, you said for better or for worse. If you are going to make my life any worse, I'm not going to leave you. Because I'm there for the world, the long run. I'm there for the long haul. That's what you said. All conditional acceptance. So that is, that is what we're talking about here this morning. When you receive somebody, you have to receive them as God's word, perfect gift to you. You have to receive them as God. Then you release them to be called all God wants them to be. You could be living with somebody. You could be with somebody. But you have not received them as God's perfect gift. And guess what? That person can never be all God intends to, to you to be in their life. It is not possible. It's not possible. As a wife, as a husband, I want to ask you this question. Are you honoring your spouse? Even he or she is dishonorable. Are you? Are you? Are you honoring your spouse? Your husband, your wife? Even if you consider that person this, uh, dishonorable, not worthy to be honored. Are you receiving your spouse as God's perfect gift to you? Or you find yourself rejecting, resenting your spouse? Do you find yourself in that place? Have you received your spouse as God's perfect gift? Because when you don't, that person cannot be all that God intends to be for you. As a parent here, are you teaching your children? Or as a father, or yeah, as a husband, are you teaching your child to honor your mother. As a wife here, are you teaching your children to honor their father? Because if you do these things, it's going to make a difference. It's going to what? It's going to make a difference. It's going to make a big difference. Hallelujah. When we honor, when we honor and when we receive the people that God has put in, into our life as God's perfect gift, all we are simply doing is releasing those people to be all God wants to be in our life. As we, as I begin to round up this morning, I want us to bow our head and, uh, and just, uh, just thank God for the word that you have heard this morning. Um, ask, ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what are you telling me from 
what I've heard this morning? What are you telling me? What are you trying to speak to me this morning? What, what, is there somebody that I need to honor that I'm not honoring? Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, teach. Let me know that person. Let me know that person. Sometimes, in this regarding the honor, um, you might, there's somebody that you might need to call. Uh, when I say call, right? Just call the person. It might be, an, it might be a father. Hmm? It might be father-in-law. It might be an uncle. Uh, the way you honor that person, I don't know who is that person here, but you just call. I don't say send money or anything. Just call. Say that I just call to say greet you and hi. And that is all. It might take a minute or two for you to do that. But just call. So who is the Holy Spirit telling you you are not honoring? Who, who's, who, who are you not honoring? Who are you not honoring? Who have you not received? You are here. You are married. <laughs> and you don't see your wife or your spouse as God's perfect gift to you. Well, this is a time for you to rethink because what the world is coming and telling us today is that until you receive that person as God's perfect gift to you, you are not releasing that person. Hallelujah. You are not releasing that person. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Lord, teach us to honor. Teach us to receive those who you have placed over us in the name of Jesus. You might be here. <laughs> You have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or you might be listening to my voice from home. You, you, the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, As many that received him, to them he gave what? Power to become what? The sons of God. Do not procrastinate. Do not push it further. Today is the time. If you're hearing my voice, look, God can, <laughs> when you do that, you limit God in your life. God can save through his son Jesus. But until you receive him, until you make him your Lord and personal Savior, until you choose to follow him, until you submit your life, you are not empowered. You don't become empowered. Jesus Christ cannot be all that he, he wants to be to you until you receive him. So if you hear my voice this morning and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, <laughs> this is the time. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and change me. Come and transform me. I submit, to, I submit my will to your will. I, I submit my will to your will, O oh God come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be praised. The Lord be exalted. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.